Y'all, when I started researching for this video, I honestly thought it was gonna be faster. <laughs> I thought that I knew everything. I genuinely did because I was a backer for the Lisa Frank Glamour Dolls campaign back in 2017. I really thought I knew the whole story. I'd watched other people's videos on it and I was in it. I did all of the things. I was part of it. My friend, oh my gosh, I did not know. There is so much that I did not know. It is so f up. Like I am just, I'm absolutely blown away. Because the thing is, is the more that I started looking into it, the more things that I found and the more connections I was making. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a story, my friend. There is so much that happened in the Lisa Frank Glamour Dolls collab that we did not know because everything wasn't laid out through hindsight. We know hindsight's 2020. Well, now we're seeing 2020, my friend, and the rainbows are not rainbowing and the unicorns and the pegasuses and they're just, they're not, it's not good. It's very bad. So if you are ready to go on this wild journey with me, this is behind the controversy and it's starting right now. I would dare to say pretty much everybody watching this video has been online and seen something that you never intended to purchase but you had that impulse feeling. You had that feeling because for some reason you didn't know that you needed this and you needed to buy it. Maybe it solved some kind of problem in your life. Maybe it was some kind of advancement on something you already knew, or maybe it was due to nostalgia, something that reminded you of your childhood or just when you were younger, something that made you feel happy during that time. And maybe it's even something that made an entire generation feel happy. That's the feeling that the backers had when we saw that Lisa Frank was coming out with makeup with a company named Glamour Dolls. Now, we did not, a lot of us had never heard of Glamour Dolls. I'm gonna be 100%, I'd never heard of Glamour Dolls before, but I had heard of Lisa Frank and I was freaking out because I was a sticker collector. I, I will tell you though, the Scratch and Sniff stickers were my faves, but Lisa Frank stickers were super cool too. They were very, very popular. And that's the way it was for a lot of people that were Gen X or older millennials mostly, I probably mid millennials as well. If it wasn't the stickers, maybe it was the school supplies <laughs> because trapper keepers were a thing. It was not just a regular notebook. It was a cool notebook and they were kind of pricey. So if you had a Lisa Frank trapper keeper, you were cool. Or if you were like me, you had a knockoff version from Kmart, which made you moderately cool. Not really, but we pretended we were. I'll never forget the day I got stuck on Lisa Frank. The stickers were so cool. The colors were awesome. I gotta find more. So I go to the store and wow, there's tons of awesome Lisa Frank stuff. I gotta have it. What more can I say? Pretty soon my friends Ashley and Lindsay are going Lisa Frank crazy too. And like I mentioned earlier, the company that started all of this wasn't super well known. They were called Glamour Dolls. So they had to get their name out there somehow. So they they used an uber popular YouTuber at the time named Candy Johnson. And Candy Johnson was the perfect influencer for this campaign. I don't even know if we were calling people influencers at that point. But anyway, my point is, is that Candy Johnson was top of her game. Everybody freaking loved Candy. She's like the sweetest, sweetest, kindest person. She has a really light voice and everybody freaking loved Candy. Hi guys, 2016 is behind us, but I am gonna share with you my best in beauty of 2016. Make sure if you have not subscribed, subscribe, join the family, become a candy corn. Candy corn, like a unicorn or like candy corn. I don't know, I'll have to think about that one. And follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook for all kinds of different and awesome things. So when Candy announced the collaboration between Glamour Dolls and Lisa Frank, people lost their minds. They opened their wallets to the tune of over 300 thousand dollars almost six thousand people backed this project now if you don't know what i'm talking about as far as kickstarter and backing a project basically it's kind of like a gofundme ish kind of thing but for a business so the business wants to make a product but they don't have the money so they go and they tell people hey we want to make this product if you back us if you give us money at different tiers you'll get 
X products for helping us to create the products. This story has been told many times before, but I don't think that it has been told in this way because what I'm going to focus on in this video is the point of view of the backers. What was it like to be a backer from the beginning? And what kinds of tactics did Glamour Dolls use to keep us hanging on for well over a year where many, many people, including me, did not ask for refunds even even after they were over a year late in sending out products. Some of you were probably sitting there thinking like, why didn't you know? Like, why didn't you see the red flags? Like what happened? I'm going to sh tell you, I'm going to share with you what they did to us. I'm pointing down because of a 22 page script here with all the f up sh that they did. Because if you haven't figured it out yet, yeah, we didn't get anything. We got, <laughs> well, some people got a little bit, but I didn't get anything. And the vast majority of people got absolutely nothing. The people that did get things got very, very little. It's, it's layered. It's multi-layered. So let's just jump into the very beginning, which was the start of the Kickstarter in February of 2017. you might want to remember about 2017 was that we didn't have the inundation of weird collabs like we do now. I mean, the Glam Light Pizza Palette was still about a year away. That one broke the internet. It was like the first really weird collab that people were like, that's odd, but also kind of cool. The kind of collabs we were getting at the time were things like Wonder Woman and Luxie and Pure and the Trolls movie. A makeup collaboration with Lisa Frank had literally never been done before. So people People naturally were very excited due to that strong feeling of nostalgia. The Kickstarter launches with a maximum bid of $40 to get a few products and a goal of $30,000. And the lowest buy-in to get something was pretty cheap at $5 for what they called a digital background. It was an image that you could use as your background on your phone or on your computer or whatever. The Kickstarter ran for 45 days from February 16th of 2017 to April 2nd of 2017. It's also important to talk about the fact that Glamour Dolls said that backers would have a say in the products being created, that there would be polling and voting and people would get sneak peeks. People would also get the products at a discount because the products would eventually end up at retailers, but the backers, because you bought it in a bundle, would get things cheaper than you would get if you bought the products in individually. Just three days into the campaign, Glamour Dolls posted their update and they were so, so excited. They said that Lisa was, quote, opening her vault and would be sending 1,000 vintage goodies to be included for the first 1,000 backers. They promised a second treat if they hit 2,000 backers and at least had something really special planned if they made it to 10,000. They're just hyping the heck out of the backers because they also promised something called stretch rewards. And the way they described it is not how it turned out. Basically what they said is that if the backers as a community Community, complete a set of challenges that something will be unlocked. And this something was going to be very, very exciting. Challenges included tasks like creating a Lisa Frank inspired makeup look and taking a picture of it, writing a rap about glitter and tweeting it. And they even had a challenge where a person had to create a foil unicorn horn and put it on their head and take a picture of themselves in public wearing the unicorn horn. 40 people had to take a picture of their vintage Lisa Frank products and submit those pictures. So the community is participating, they're exciting, they're talking about all the things that they're doing because in every comment section under each post, there's a place for people of the community to communicate, to talk about what's happening. It's almost like a little, it's not a message board, it's just kind of a place to dump things that people were thinking after the update. So people are hyped about this. They're so excited about their stretch reward. And this is the first big disappointment for the backers because it was not an extra item added to the bag. It wasn't even a reward because when you think of a reward, you think that you're getting something. What it actually was, was a mock-up photo of an image of a three-piece nail polish set. 
And this is the kicker about it, no pun intended, that the nail polish set wasn't included in any of the levels. So nobody that had put in any money at this point was going to get the nail polishes that were featured in the picture. In order to get the nail polishes, you had to now increase your bid by at least $15 because Glamour Dolls had just created new tiers that required more investment. And the backers were like, what? That's it? The the what we just worked so hard for, we just did all the challenges. 40 of us sent pictures of our Lisa Frank stuff that we dug out of our basement or out of our attics, and we found the stuff and we took the picture and we did all the work and we got a, a drawing of something we're not getting unless we spend more money. That's what happened. I'm gonna put the whole post on the screen for you to read, but I'll read one of the key points. We started this collection with a handful of products, but a big part of this Kickstarter is expanding the collection with the community and developing new products to add to it. What maybe separates this Kickstarter from others is that we don't know how big the collection will ultimately be. It all depends on community engagement. But the thing was, is they told people how big it was going to be because that's what they put their money in for because it said if you put the money in for this amount then you'll get this stuff and now she's saying that it may get even bigger than that because what was about to happen is they were about to add even more tiers with even more products the explanation continued with this which was the kicker we would have told you from the beginning that basically it was only a drawing of a mock-up of something that no one was getting yet but we only developed it last week in response to fan engagement and after we researched cost and formulations, for many people, the challenges were a fun way to unlock it and will be clear going forward so you can choose whether to participate. Unlock what? They unlocked a picture of something that they had to pay more for. The thing is, is that's kind of the way that these ro stretch rewards work, but they didn't explain it to people that way. When people see a stretch reward, they're going to think they're getting something as a reward. What it is traditionally called is a stretch goal and that is not something that is officially part of Kickstarter but something that Kickstarter campaigns do often. They usually call them goals not rewards. And from what I was reading a lot of the stretch goals typically happen after the backers already have their first set of products because they've gotten their products, they're excited about it, they're loving it and now they want something more. So in order to stretch their amount that they've collected and create more products, they have a stretch goal. So let's say if I get 100 people to donate 20 more dollars, we can create X products. So let's see if we can get to our stretch goal rather than it's a mystery, it's a game, it's a reward. It wasn't. They just completely misrepresented that to the backers. But I'm telling you that snafu is mild compared to what is coming next. Like that's, that's just extremely minor. It gets so, so much worse. So trying to backtrack, Glamour Dolls tells their backers, hey, if we get to 3,500 backers, then we are going to include in everybody's bag, the first 3,500 people, a Lisa Frank designed crease brush. Sometimes they call this a crease brush. Sometimes they call it a blending brush. It's the same brush. The promise of the free crease brush. I am not kidding you, according to the Kickstarter, brought them past that 3,500 backer mark in 24 hours. So at this point in time, highest level includes everything that they've said so far, plus the nail polishes at a $60 price point. But people were still mad. People were like, this is not what you said it was going to be, sir, ma'am, sir. So in response, Glamour Dolls was like, okay, well, we will add something else. We'll add something from our own line. It was what they called their gypsy eyeliners to the first 2,000 backers who complete a survey to pick their preferred color of this liner. They were going to add that into the boxes. And that I think kind of calmed people down a little bit. They were like, okay, that feels more like a reward. And people started getting really excited about everything all over again. A backer named Marcia said, wow, thanks yet again. The entire vibe of this campaign totally reminds me of what it felt like to open my noisy Lisa Frank Trapper Keeper, write with my pencils, play with my erasers that I never used to keep pristine like dolls, LOL, etc. in school. It made me smile and dream. I feel like we are all reliving our childhoods through this campaign and your team is making this fun. I'm hoping this will begin a new generation of Lisa Frank fans when kids see us using our stuff. Little did Marsha and the rest of us know, uh, we'd never use the stuff. 
we're not getting the stuff. In March of 2017, the Kickstarter is still going on. And one of the founders and CEOs of Glamour Dolls came on to clarify a couple of things. You're going to see his name coming up a lot. His name is Peter. He looks like that. Just so you can get a visual of who we're talking to. Peter. CEO, founder, Glamour Dolls, along with a chick named Jessica. That's Jessica. Back in 2017, unless you were in the makeup industry, there wasn't as much information readily available about how makeup manufacturing worked. So Peter felt like it was important to explain to the backers kind of what we were in for with this. He explained something called minimum order quantities. And he said, as we get more pledges, we have to order more units. And if the order gets big enough, we're able to consider adding new products, knowing that we will be able to meet the factory factory minimums for packaging and filling. And then he says, as we add new products, there will need to be some higher pledge tiers. There's no way around it. I wish I could tell you exactly how much the highest tier will be or how many products we'll end up with, but we came here to figure that out with you. But you may see the problem with this in that they haven't even created or started to create the products that they've already promised. And now they're talking about adding on another layer, more tiers, more products that also they don't have any plan for how they're going to make them. There's no artwork from Lisa Frank. There's no colors picked out. There's just a concept in their minds. That's all that exists. And as we go through this, you'll realize they didn't even calculate the financials on how much all of this was going to cost. Or if they did calculate the financials, they didn't care. <laughs> they were like, oh, we'll figure it out somehow. <laughs> and then Peter said something that stuck in the minds of backers for the rest of of the campaign. This is what he said. Ultimately, whatever we do and don't figure out, these products will be available for individual purchase before the end of the year, the end of 2017. Kickstarter backers will just be getting them first. They didn't. So you remember how I said they were adding all of these new products and either they didn't calculate the financials to figure out how much they were going to cost or they did know, but they feel like, how we'll get the money from somewhere. They kind of figured out how they might get the money. They tapped into a creator named Wenji. Now, back then, there was a big boom around creators who did DIY challenge kinds of videos. I'm going to show you some of Wenji's thumbnails. She got tens of millions of views on these videos. Wenji was huge in this space, especially with kids. At the time, Wenji only had 6 million official subscribers on her channel, but she had way more watching her. Hey guys, it's Wenji, welcome back. But today I'm here to make a special awesome announcement. I'm so excited to announce this, like I can't even right now. I'm going to be collaborating with Lisa Frank and Glamour Dolls on an eyeshadow palette, like what? For those of you that have not heard about Lisa Frank, she is so amazing. She's like literally my childhood and her art is all about rainbows, unicorns, colorful, like everything I'm about, like her art is my aesthetic. But the most amazing thing is you guys get to be involved as well because you guys are my WenjiCon fam and if I'm going to work on my first huge collaboration, it's got to be with you guys. So I really want you guys to help contribute to our creative, choose the colors with us, choose the designs of the palette. And we've partnered with Glamour Dolls and Makeup to make this come alive because they are a high quality, vegan, cruelty free brand. Not only that, they make super affordable makeup because I want this collaboration to be affordable to everyone. And the great thing about this whole process is this was internationally available no matter where you are. You can pre-order this palette. I'm not 100% on this timeline, but it seems like this is when they added more tiers. They added a $70 tier, a $100 tier, and a $200 tier. But what they added that was the most important thing that I think really turned everything was the addition of the Trapper Keeper palettes. These were going to be six pan eyeshadow palettes that looked legit like a trapper keeper. No one had ever seen anything like this before. And the nostalgia overload. Oh my gosh. People lost their minds when they were thinking, oh my gosh, a trapper keeper eyeshadow palette. I need to have this in my life. So along with the Wenji Trapper Keeper palette, there would be a naturally glam palette and a bold and bright palette, all adorned with Lisa Frank artwork. Just an hour before the Kickstarter ended, Glamour Dolls made another promise. They said that everybody, thanks to their participation, anybody that participated in the Kickstarter was going to get a goodie bag. What was in the goodie bag? 
no idea. No one ever got it. But they promised that they said there's going to be a goodie bag added. Thank you so much for backing this project. According to the community at the time, it looked like before Wenji launched her video, they were at about $250,000 in pledges. After Wenji launched her video, they hit their peak at $370,000 raised and almost 6,000 people. That was an average of about $62 spent per backer. The $100 tier got everything from the collection and the $200 tier got two sets of everything in the collection. Now me not having a ton of money at the time and being a procrastinator, I waited until the last minute to back this campaign. So I joined in at the very last moment in the very last day of the campaign at the $70 level. So I paid $70 plus $5 shipping. And I will tell you, I was most excited about those dang Trapper Keeper palettes. <laughs> so excited about those things and I was excited after I saw the drawing I was excited about the nail polishes they looked really cool I'd never seen anything quite like that and I wanted to review it for the channel I was excited to talk to you all about it was it good quality along with being really cute I wanted to let you know Then something really weird happened because at the time I was really into subscription boxes I got a ton of them I got my Ipsy bag and I got this in it. <laughs> yes, I still have it. This is the Lisa Frank blush brush. What? Why, why am I getting this in an Ipsy bag? Let me go ahead and show you. It is super, super freaking cute. There is a little line here where the image connects, but overall it's just a very cute design. I will show you though that the you know, it is a little wiggly. It's not great quality. But at the time, I was more just confused. We are all super confused on what is happening and why the Lisa Frank blush brushes are an Ipsy. You guys, I'm so excited. I saw that this might be a possibility of something that you could get in your bag, and I got it. I'm so excited. The fourth grader in me is like jumping up and down. She has her Lisa Frank trapper keeper like in the air. This is a Lisa Frank inspired brush. Look at this thing, look at this thing. There's magical like unicorns on the handle and it is pink and vibrant and blue and green and all sorts of magical colors. If I would have had this in fourth grade, I would have been the coolest kid around. I would have been like, yes, I'm putting on my fake blush with my Lisa Frank blush brush. Thank you very much. Guys, I'm completely serious. I had the trapper keeper. I had the folders. I had the pencils. I had the little like pencil holder. I had everything everything Lisa Frank. When I was in fourth grade, that was like the only way to be cool was to have like multicolored rainbow cheetahs on your trapper keeper. And now I am a 24 year old woman with a rainbow unicorn brush and I love it. But it does make sense. It will make sense. I'm gonna get there. About a month after the Kickstarter ended, there was a red flag. Besides the red flag of the blush brush being in Ipsy bags and them not telling us that this could happen, this was another major red flag that we probably should have seen. What they posted to the Kickstarter was basically about lessons that they had learned so far. This is what they said. Lisa knows how much we've got in the works, but her advice was to stop and focus on a few things with high production quality rather than trying to do everything at once. Our friends at Kickstarter gave us some very similar advice. This is a marathon not a sprint. We've taken it to heart and stopped, gone back to the lab and made sure that the next few weeks are going to run smoothly and be everything that we promised. So everybody, Lisa Frank, Kickstarter, everybody's telling Glamour Dolls, you're doing too much. Stop. You have made too many promises and you are going to just lose everything. Slow down, figure out how you're going to just get a couple of high quality products out and then worry about the rest. But the thing is, is on the Kickstarter page, it had said estimated delivery of September of 2017. So we are now beginning of May, June, July, August, September. That's four months until the estimated delivery date of the products. Now, I didn't know at the time a lot about production. I had no idea. So I didn't know that was freaking impossible. 
I don't think a lot of us knew that that was freaking impossible, but it was freaking impossible. But Glamour Dolls didn't tell us it was freaking impossible. Oh no, they made us think it was, we were getting our stuff in September. Because remember at this point, they've got 13 products that they've promised us, including counting each nail polish as one product. And then on top of that, they had promised us that they would add in a Lisa Frank designed nail file. So that made it 14 products that they needed to give us in four months. Because we didn't realize as backers that Lisa was designing all of this stuff from scratch. Why in the world she was not using existing artwork? I have no freaking clue. I still don't know why she didn't use existing artwork. And in hindsight, this is why hindsight's 2020. Glamour Dolls had to have known there was no way in hell we were getting this stuff by September, but they didn't tell us that. They even went so far as people saying that it was their birthday in September and they were so excited to get Glamour Dolls products for their birthday. And Glamour Dolls like, yay, we're so excited for you to get them too. They knew darn well those people were not getting those products for their birthday. In May of 2017, the surveys continued. They started really asking us our opinions on how we wanted things to be done. And we started seeing actual product coming together. They sent a picture of this unicorn lippy. It was a lip balm and it was a unicorn and it was so freaking cute in this little empty white box. Of course it was a white box because Lisa hadn't designed the artwork yet, but they were like, yes, look at this dress of this unicorn and it's so cute. And then they sent over the picture of the vegan leather makeup bag. Also so cute, really cute little zipper that was like a rainbow. And it was, it was white, of course, because again, Lisa hadn't designed the artwork yet. We also got a final look at the upcoming crease brush. Now, keep in mind that the blush brush that was already sent out to Ipsy people and this crease brush were only going to be shipped to the highest tier backers, the $100 level and the $200 level. This is going to be important in just a moment. In June, we get another, in hindsight, red flag because Glamour Dolls opened up another way to buy items from the collection from a site called Backer Kit. And on Backer Kit, you could order products individually to be added to your box when all of your stuff shipped. It was also a way for people who hadn't been part of the Kickstarter to get on the action and order the products. If you did happen to order the angled blush brush from Backer Kit, those blush brushes did go out, but the $100 and $200 people still didn't have a blush brush. Unless they got it in their Ipsy bag, then they had a blush brush. And if they were a $200 tier, they were gonna end up with three blush brushes by the end of it if they also got it in Ipsy. And in June, backers got a sneak peek of a single eyeshadow and a bronzer. We are almost there of the big debacle with the bronzer and the eyeshadow. That's a whole nother thing. We're almost there. Throughout June, we also got sneaks of the Trapper Keeper palettes. We were so excited. The draft of the actual product packaging. We also got sneaks of the matte mousse swatches. We also got information about what the nail polish colors were gonna look like. I mean, they are giving us pieces and pieces and pieces of this is coming, this is coming, this is what we're working on. They really did show us a lot. But one thing you'll notice if you listen carefully to this video, of the nail polish swatches is somebody in the background says something about Hot Topic. That's going to be another piece. <laughs> Hang tight. They also said that everything was still on track for shipping in September in three months. How are they telling us this? They they lied to us. They they outright lied to us. They had to have known darn well we weren't getting shit in September. <laughs> because at this point, nobody had even gotten this digital background yet. That should have been the easiest thing to do. You have a piece of art, you send it out as a background, you just digitally send it. You don't even have to mail anything. You don't even have to create a physical product. It's literally just a piece of art emailed. That's it. They didn't even make that yet. Here comes another red flag. Are you ready? In July, they started selling that crease brush that was supposed to go to the top tier backers. They started selling it on their website for $4.99. And according to Pop Sugar, it sold out immediately at the beginning of July and then restocked in the middle of the July. So this is what I think happened because of course you can't sell out and then restock two weeks later from a true sellout. You have to order more. 
they didn't sell out. What they did, I think, is they had a number of extra brushes beyond what people had, what they had, you know, allocated to send out. So they sold those brushes. And when they realized they were selling out so fast, they sold the backers brushes. I guess figuring they would just make more and they would just send more out later. I don't know. So while all of this is happening, Glamour Dolls is continually and constantly involving the backers in the development process of everything. We're watching everything go down. And I will honestly tell you, I kind of tuned out. I was like, I don't even freaking care. Like, I don't care what things look, I just want the products. Like I, I participated in a couple of surveys, but after that, I just stopped reading the emails. <laughs> I was like, I don't care. I don't care about like all this. It's too much. It's just, just send me the products. I don't care what y'all decide. I just, it's fine. It's whatever. So I kind of tuned out at this point, but a lot of people were very invested in all of these choices. The backers even started arguing amongst each other where some people were being a little harsh about the design, like with the Trapper Keeper palette saying that the mirror was too small and that can you make the mirror bigger? People complaining that there were too many unicorns. Like, and then some people just being like, just, just, what did you expect? It's Lisa Frank. Let's just, just let them do the thing. It's fine. It's fine. People were just getting frustrated and they just started arguing back and forth a little bit. Jessica, the co-founder with Peter even came in and was like, hey y'all, you need to speak nicely to each other. Like we're a community, we're working on this together. Cause it started to get a little heated. Now we're in August of 2017, one month before we're supposed to be getting our products shipped. We get another shot of the bronzer, this time with swatches. This is what they said. We specifically developed this formula so it's universally flattering, making it the perfect shade for all of our dolls. Unless the dolls are deeper than that color, I, I don't know. The thing is, is like you really can't make a universal shade of bronzer because what works for someone with very deep skin is not gonna work for someone with very pale skin. You, skin, you just can't do that. All you can do is shoot for the middle. So just saying that they made it for all of their dolls just really was kind of insulting to some of the backers. The most interesting update, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the screen for you, but I'll read the most interesting part. They said, we know we've been a little quiet over the past few weeks, but trust us, we have so many fun and exciting updates to share with you guys. The Trapper Keeper palette artwork should be finalized any day now any day now. And we literally cannot wait to show you what it looks like. This collaboration has been long time in the works and we know that in the end, it'll be worth all the blood, sweat, and glitter tears that we put into it. There's no mention of any shipping delays. There's just, we're getting our products, all of them in September apparently. And the reason why we know this is because they keep showing us things. They keep showing us that things are almost done. We got a sneak peek of the shades that were gonna be in the bold and bright palette. We also got an explanation about the digital artwork that was supposed to be going out. And what they basically said is they wanted to start with the hardest products first, like the Trapper Keeper palettes, and then work their way to the easiest stuff, which would be the digital background. In mid-August, they put out a statement that the Wenji palette was almost finished and that they would update when they had an exact delivery schedule. So it's getting toward the end of August and the people with the September birthdays are starting to realize I'm not getting this for my birthday, am I? So there was a backer that said, it's obvious that all the September birthday backers are not receiving their makeup next month. It's almost September and not many products and designs are finalized. As much of a bummer this may be, getting Lisa Frank makeup for Christmas will still be really cool. I hope it's ready by then. It's not gonna be ready. So September finally arrives and everybody's like, okay, we're gonna get our announcement that everything is gonna be shipped. But we did not get that. What we got was a sneak of the shade of the lip mousse. And no mention of the fact that things are supposed to be shipping right now. Like they just didn't even say anything. Comment after comment, people are like, what the hell? You're showing me a sneak of the shade of the lip mousse. How are you still making this? We're supposed to be getting them shipped this month. So after that post, everybody was pissed. Everybody was sounding off in the comments how mad they were. So the CEO had to regroup and he ended up putting out a very lengthy statement. I will put it all on the screen for you. He sincerely apologizes for gaps in communication and disappointment. And he says that if for any reason backers are not happy that they can send an email and they will issue a refund immediately, followed with quote, we need to stress to all of you that you will be receiving the products that you paid for 
for no matter what. And I really genuinely don't think people ask for refunds because of this, because they saw things that they really wanted and they knew if they asked for a refund, they weren't going to get any of it. And they still had faith that at some point this was going to happen. Maybe it wasn't going to happen right now, but if I take my money out, I'm not getting all this stuff. And if I do want it, I'm going to have to wait for it to go to retailers and I'm going to have to pay retail price for it. I have to have I'm gonna have to pay a lot more money for it when if I had just been patient, I would have gotten everything that I wanted. The post continued with statements about threats that they were getting across social media. And they said that they're, the threats are unnecessary and if they want a refund to just let them know. And they also said about the shipping delay, they said it was just an estimated shipping delivery for September. Quote, we started all these products from scratch with you at the concept phase and this is our first time working with a license. So there are new steps and things to learn. Hiccups have ranged from trying to find the right fulfillment agents to some of the packaging samples we received not being up to our standards. We were clear from the beginning and in previous updates that things might get delayed as the process played out. We realized that September will be over within a few short weeks, which means we will unfortunately not be, a, be on target with our hopeful September estimation. This is a bold face lie. It is a straight up lie. They never once in any of the updates told anybody that there could possibly be a delay. In fact, they reassured customers that everything was on track for September. They lied. Regarding communication, they said it hasn't been the best, but they're going to do better in the future. And about people getting the brush in Ipsy, remember I said, hold on, we're going to get to it. This is, I'm getting to it right now. They said the only products from this collection that are on the market are the Lisa Frank blush brush and the Lisa Frank blending brush. Those were developed six months before the Kickstarter, along with the eyeshadow and the travel bronzer for a specific customer. That specific customer was Ipsy and were offered during this campaign as an additional perk or add-on so that you can truly have everything in the collection. Beyond that, we can assure you that anything being developed through Kickstarter will be in your hands first. What they don't mention in this was the update where they said that 3,500 backers, the first 3,500, were also going to get the crease slash blending brush. They've conveniently forgotten about that. That actually never gets mentioned again. When backers pointed out that Glam Dolls raised 10 times more than their original goal of $30,000, they said that it didn't make things easier. It actually made things more complicated because that's when they started adding extra products. Well, whose dang fault was that? This is also the first mention of hand-painted items. Why are there hand-painted items in this collection? I have no idea. I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. We'll talk about that. They also mentioned that of course, because the backers went in and helped them fund the products that they will get everything at a cheaper price than what they will be sold at retail. Then they break down everything that they say is happening right now, including they say specifically that all the products have been finalized and physical production samples have been approved. But they do say they're keeping three products blank so that the community can vote on what kind of artwork is going to go onto those three products. They also promise that on October 1st, they are going to ship out those four products that were made before the Kickstarter started. The two brushes, the eyeshadow, and the bronzer. They'll go out to the $100 and $200 backers, as well as anybody that added them on. They also say this, in addition to the press, we were reached out to by a few major retailers, all of whom require time and energy to onboard with. There have been many sleepless nights, and it has been a journey as we try to build our team and turn this opportunity opportunity into a solid foundation. I don't think we knew what this meant at the time, but this meant that they had two retailers they were talking to to sell these products, Hot Topic and Dolls Kill. The letter then goes on to pull at the heartstrings of the backers to get everybody to calm down and be patient and be nice to them. They should give shout outs to the staff members and the interns and statements like Jessica and I are both people too. And they mentioned Jessica neglecting her own wedding because she's working so hard on this project. Project. They also talk about Peter missing friends and family members, major life events due to trying to make this product happen. Quote, we like to think that if you were able to see our day to day, those of you who feel the need to be critical would be a little less so. And this is when there is a complete tone shift in the comment section underneath the project. 
the comments are so kind and so patient. There's even people saying that they expected the products to ship after September because a lot of Kickstarters ship late, which I found isn't necessarily true, but people were really nice to Peter after his post. It's like, yeah, you are human. Let's give you some time. I can see that you're trying, like you're doing your best and things are coming. It'll be soon. Everybody's just being super, super nice to them. But one backer, Ariel, she really sum things up, but in a very, very polite way. She asked questions like she wanted to know the dates of the extra promises, like the Glamour Dolls Gypsy Eyeliner Pencil, the vintage Lisa Frank item that they were promised, the nail file and the digital background. And of course her questions went completely unanswered. On September 21st, they said, thank you so much. The eyeshadow and the bronzer production have been completed. We have them. They say as a a huge thank you for supporting us throughout this journey. We've decided to ship out the orders early for those of you who backed a tier that includes them or added them to their pledge afterward in backer kit. But you and I both know that this is not on time. October 1st is technically late because the estimated ship time was September and they're shipping them in October, but they're using this language on purpose to manipulate the backers and make them feel good that they're getting things early because what I think they meant was that they had intended to send out the packages when they were all completed, but they're sending these particular items because they're ready out before the rest of the products are ready. But Glamour Dolls makes it sound like this is a, like, a big reward. This is something we're doing for you because we care about you. No, this is something that you owe to people. This is not, this is not a, a luxury. This is not a super kind thing to do. This is just what you should be doing. Then things switch with the digital background. Basically what they were saying was that they wanted to give an update on the digital background and they said that Lisa had some concerns about her artwork being stolen. I don't know. I think that if anybody wanted to steal Lisa Frank artwork, it'd be pretty easy to do, but I digress. So anyway, they were worried about this digital background being stolen and then put on things illegally. So they didn't want to do a digital background. Instead, Lisa was going to go into her vault and she found these vintage postcards and these vintage postcards were going to be shipped out instead of the digital background to anybody that pledged $5 or more. So every single person that pledged was going to get one of these and 25 people would have one that was hand signed, personally signed by Lisa herself. This postcard was supposed to go out once all of the orders, all of the products had been made and the final orders were being shipped. Then they dropped drawing designs of the caps of the nail polishes. And I was thinking as I was looking at this, I was like, didn't they just say like a week ago that everything was already designed, that they already had all the mock-ups? Apparently that was a lie. And would you be shocked to learn that the shipping of the bronzers doesn't happen on October 1st? Because it doesn't happen. <laughs> In October, the community is sent a poll about the design for the vegan makeup bag. They have the choice of Zoomer and Zorbit, who are aliens, dancing dolphins, or Sky the Pegasus. We also saw the first physical samples of the Naturally Glam and the Bold and Bright palette. So freaking cute. The community loses their minds over these palettes. Comments are lighting up about people so excited to get these palettes in their hands. And like I said, the eyeshadows and bronzers, that stuff did not end up shipping on October 1st because Glamour Doll says that they were stuck in customs for two weeks. They said an update being as today is 1026, we expect the product to arrive to the shipping facility and ship to you on October 31st. And therefore you should expect the makeup on your doorstep during the first week of November. Are you surprised that this did actually happen? Me too. <laughs> In November, we get more information about the two brushes, the eyeshadow, and the bronzer. They talk about how the products had already been in production when the Kickstarter started, but where Peter shot himself in the foot was because in May, he said that the backers would be getting the products first, and he should have known not to say that because he knew that they were going to end up in Ipsy bags before the backers got them, but he didn't tell anybody that. He just lied to everybody instead, and then when we found that they were in Ipsy bags, we naturally freaked out. Because not only were the blush brushes in the April Ipsy bags, but the bronzers were in the November Ipsy bags. Oh my gosh, is this a Lisa Frank? <gasps> Glamour Dolls, Bitten and Bronze, Matte 
bronzer. A while ago, we got a Lisa Frank brush in our Ipsy bag. I wonder if this is from the same line. I'm not really expecting much from this bronzer because I feel like it's just maybe on the more gimmicky side, but I hope that it works amazingly well. Color is really promising. It's not too warm and it's not too cool. I'm gonna swatch it out. It feels a little bit powdery. Ooh, it actually feels really nice and smooth on the skin. Granted, I did just put that hand cream on, so I don't really know what that says, but it feels really buttery-ish on the skin. Feels nice. The color is pretty good too. If you're fair though, I don't think that this is going to work for you because it's, it's showing up on my really tan hand. So if you're fair, I don't think that this bronzer is for you, but it's really effing cute. I wish the actual packaging looked as cute as the box, but I mean, it's still pretty cute. As a backer, what we were thinking was that Glamour Dolls took our money from the Kickstarter and made these bronzers and made the brushes and made the eyeshadows with our money and then sold them to Ipsy, which is actually not what happened. I put all of the timelines together and it turns out they did not use Kickstarter money in order to fund these products. They had used a different website. It was called Kick Further. Kick Further, it still exists. It's kind of like Kickstarter, but instead of backing a project and getting product, you back a project and you get interest on your investment. It's basically a way that small businesses can fund the production of something and then pay the investors back. So I went over to the Glamour Dolls Kick Further page and what I found out was that they had done a Kick Further campaign to produce the blush brushes. They raised $166,000 and they paid those backers back about two weeks after the Kickstarter ended in April of 2017. They ran a second Kick Further campaign that was running about the same time that the Kickstarter campaign was running. It was from February 13th of 2017 to March 6th of 2017. This was to fund the production of the eyeshadow and the bronzer because with the money they got for the blush brush, they were also able to make the crease brush. There's a lot of businessy language over there and I'll be honest, I don't understand a lot of what they're talking about, but I will tell you what I did understand. So he's basically saying people are concerned that they're not going to get their money back. And he's reassuring them and basically saying they've got these two purchase orders. They're very, very blurry. There's stuff that's knocked out of it. But we know now in hindsight that the brand that ordered the highlighter and the bronzer was Ipsy. You can kind of make out in the very blurry paperwork that Ipsy paid $378,750 for the bronzer, same for the eyeshadows. And that was for 757,500 units of each product, but they were not going to pay that money until the product was delivered. That's why they needed the kick further people was to actually make the products. Once they delivered them, then they would get the money from Ipsy and they could pay the kick further backers back. So here's the math broken down. Glamour Dolls raises $313,000 from the kick further. They spend that money to make the bronzer and the eyeshadow. Ipsy pays them two payments of $378,750, which is $757,500 total for those two products. Then they have to pay interest to the kick further backers. They pay out $354,000 about to those backers. That's $41,000 dollars in profit for the kick further people but that gives glamour dolls about four hundred thousand dollars from those two products from the ipsy deal plus they still have that three hundred fifty thousand dollars from the kickstarter in order to make products so what happened to all of that money where did they spend it i have it i know exactly where they spent it I have to, but we have to get there. So remember the backers over on the Kickstarter have no idea any of this kick further stuff was happening. But, and Glamour Dolls had no obligation to share it. It wasn't our business, but this was happening behind the scenes. In mid-November, the backers at the $100 and $200 level, as well as people that added on the bronzer or the eyeshadow are starting to get their products in the mail. Remember they had ordered these back between February and April, it's now November, and they finally got some products. And they also have their vintage Lisa Frank postcard. 
Glamour Dolls seemed a little bit ooh about that because the postcards technically won't, weren't supposed to go out yet. The postcards were supposed to be in the final package. So what they told the backers was, if you got a postcard in this order, you'll get a second one in your next order. That's the order where we're gonna ship you out everything. And this is when Glamour Dolls is forced to admit that they are selling the Lisa Frank branded stuff, the stuff that's supposed to be in the hands of the backers first, over at Hot Topic and Dolls Kill because people found the products available on Hot Topic. <laughs> But they spin it. They're such manipulative liars. I swear. This is so awful. This is what they said. The eyeshadow that leaked on Hot Topic that some of you eagle eyes caught, we are so impressed, was supposed to be a teaser promo for what's to come. And we were 100% not aware that they would be breaking the news so soon. We're, of course, thrilled to have such an amazing partnership, but we truly had no idea they were launching this promo so early. Now that the cat's out of the bag, so to speak, we'd love to formally introduce you to the new single eyeshadow shades in the Lisa Frank Glamour Dolls line, followed by swatches of two shadows, not one. This second single shadow was never a part of the original list of products. Why are they making more products? It's because they could make money off of Hot Topic customers. That's why they made more, because apparently they need more money. But then it gets so, so much worse. This was when I went on my Twitter and I was like, this is fun ridiculous. If you were following me on Twitter and you saw me freaking out on Twitter about what I was finding, this is what I had found because the postcards, the postcards. Okay. I know it's just a postcard, but it's, it's wild. So the postcards were coming damaged. Some of them were ripped. Some of them were creased. People were saying they got a signed one and it was ripped and they wanted another one, but then they were worried they wouldn't get another signed one. And how could the signed one be ripped? It's a vintage postcard. These can't be reproduced. But was it? Because people noticed that there was a QR code on the postcard. These are supposed to be vintage and there was a QR code on the postcard. And I sh you not, this is what Glamour Dolls said. QR codes actually came out in the 90s, if you can believe it. These postcards are right from the vault. So I had to look that up because I was like, are you being for serious right now? <laughs> He's right, the QR codes did come out in the 90s, but nobody had any ability to use them until smartphones had cameras. According to the article in Microsoft, in 2002, Sharp introduced the first cell phone with a QR scanner and competing cell phone companies followed suit. Eventually, everyone who owned a smartphone possessed a QR scanner in their pocket. So at the very earliest, the postcards were 15 years old, but I will tell you there is a 0% chance a 0% chance that these postcards were 15 years old. And the reason why is because the QR code conveniently took you to a Lisa Frank app, which definitely did not exist in 2002. I found the two apps that she had available. The apps at the time were the Lisa Frank Pick and Share. It was developed in 2012 per this BuzzFeed article. Apparently it sucked, according to them. The other was called Zoom and Color, which launched in February of 2013. So unless somebody calls something vintage that is five years old, these are not vintage at all, not even close, but it gets worse. <laughs> It get worse. Not only weren't they vintage, they weren't signed. Some people were looking at their signature because a lot of people in the group seem to have gotten signatures. There were 1,700 people that should have gotten these postcards because they pledged that $100 tier or more. At least 1,700 people. But it seemed like almost everybody, if not everybody commenting, was getting one of these 25 rare signed postcards. Something was going on. There was a woman named Callie who didn't get her postcard yet and was seeing all these people commenting that they'd gotten a signed one. And she's like, oh, I guess I'm not gonna get a signed one with my order. And Glamour Dolls was like, yeah, you do have a chance because maybe not all the 25 have been sent out. We're not sure because Lisa sent them directly to the warehouse and we don't know which ones went into the boxes. And Kelly says, yes, definitely still a chance. Realistically, we won't know who received the 25 postcards until they're all sent out once all the products are through production and shipped out. Talk about suspense. But we know how many of them were signed. They were all signed 
every single one of them were sun because thanks to tips from people that were commenting they said well there's pictures of the postcards on instagram that people are posting the signatures are absolutely 100 percent identical down to the size of the commas and the sizes of the loops and the extra little dot in the smiley face these were photocopied every single one had a lisa frank signature on it I even found an unboxing of one of these. This was from a channel called Beauty Pop. And here was her reaction to getting the postcard. So first off, there is this little card. It's really, really cute. Has a Lisa Frank like illustration on it. I really like it. And it says, lots of love, XO, I don't, the team or something maybe? I don't know what that says. That signature is kind of hard to read. So it says a little postcard. It's really, really cute. I think I'm gonna save this because I really do like the art that's on it. She didn't even realize that it was Lisa Frank's signature because it doesn't look like Lisa's Frank, Lisa Frank's signature. We see the Lisa Frank name on everything and it looks like a signature. That's not her real signature apparently. So she didn't even realize that that was what it was supposed to be, <laughs> which I get, I totally get. But it just goes to show how the signature was of zero value, absolutely zero value. One person said her eyeshadow came shattered and then a backer named named Denisha was super disappointed and she said she lost all complete hope that anything would work out for her. She said, I was happy to get one of the signed cards because at this point everybody thinks that their hand's signed, but I'm already not enthused about this makeup working for me. The eyeshadow is beautiful and I might use it as a highlighter, but the bronzer is a complete waste of time. I really don't think based on the poll winners, etc., that this line will work out for melanated backers. Even Beauty Pop, who's closer to my skin tone, swatches the bronzer, bronzer and pretty much says the same thing. So the postcard was a complete scam and it doesn't seem like Glamour Dolls knew that, but Lisa had to have known that. Where did Glamour Dolls get the information? Number one, that these were vintage and number two, that they would be hand signed because neither of those things were true. Did Lisa lie to them? Did Glamour Dolls know it and lie to the backers? I would dare to say Lisa probably misled Glamour Dolls, but it's Glamour Dolls fault for not even seeing the postcards and verifying what they were before giving false promises to the backers. So at this point, there starts to be kind of a split between the backers. Some people are really excited and some people are starting to get really disappointed. There's a backer named Lizzie and she says, honestly, if I'd known about the other shades not being available through the Kickstarter with this whole, when this whole thing started, it wouldn't have bothered me. What really irritates me is that we keep finding out about these things, items being sent out in Ipsy bags, Hot Topic suddenly selling items from this collection, etc., on our own, and then we hear from you about it once someone calls you out and questions. It's important to be upfront and open with your backers so they feel like they can trust you. The problem is, is that they weren't trustworthy. That's the problem. And that's what a lot of the backers were learning. And beyond that, people were really disappointed about the design of the eyeshadow and the bronzer themselves because the Lisa Frank artwork was on the outer cardboard box and not on the actual packaging. Because a lot of people, I know I do, I tend to throw away the outer box and I use the product itself. So the artwork, I thought, was going to be on the actual product and not on the outer carton. So people were really disappointed about that too. On November 22nd, they send out a mock-up of the lip balm tin. This is the first time we see the lip balm tin and it looks kind of cute. But like I said, at this point, we kind of are starting to get that split between the backers, but most people seem to still be really excited. In December of 2017, they send out a big update with progress on all of the products. They stress again, the process of creating this product. They get the sample, they get the artwork from Lisa, they get the artwork put onto the sample, they send that sample over to Lisa for approval, and then she has the opportunity to revise the sample and change things. Then they have to send that back to the lab with the revisions, and it doesn't seem like Lisa has a limit on how many revisions she can make on a product. So that's why things seem to be taking so long, is because it's just such a multi-step process. And where I, I keep digging back is that didn't they know this when they started the Kickstarter, that this was the format they were working with? Why would you tell backers that there was an estimated ship date that was you knew 100% was going to be impossible? Based on what they're saying here, that I'm sure that they knew before they started, I don't understand why they would just outright lie like that. Glamour Dolls has created this problem for themselves. Lisa isn't helping, which we'll find out more in a minute, but 
Glamour Dolls has created this situation. So right now, as of December 17th, the things that are available for purchase were the crease slash blending brush, the blush brush, the bronzer, and the two eyeshadows in Heartthrob and Picnic. Heartthrob was created specifically for Hot Topic. Picnic was created for the backers, but they were selling both at Hot Topic. For the Unicorn Lippy, they said that the design was finalized, but they were waiting for the manufacturer to hand paint the product in order for them to see what a final product was going to look like. This is the hand painted product is this lippy. Each one of these is going to need to be painted by a person, 5,000 some of them by a person. They said the vegan leather cosmetic bag, the eyeliner, the lip balm tin, and the shimmer powder highlighter were waiting for Lisa's approval. The lip mousse was waiting for packaging to come back because the color of the mousse didn't match the cap and it was supposed to match the cap and the logo, and it didn't, so they were waiting for that. The palettes were being remade because they didn't like the way that they folded together. They felt like the image didn't line up properly, so once they got it to line up properly, they were gonna send it to Lisa for approval. And finally, the nail polish trio, they were waiting for manufacturing of the sample to send to Lisa. You remember that the nail polish set was a reward back in February, <laughs> back when the Kickstarter started? Uh, yeah, the sample bottles were still being manufactured manufactured in December. People are also asking, okay, so can we get an actual ship date? Like what is, what's the actual timeline for this? When will we have products in our hands? On December 15th, Glamour Dolls breaks the sad news that if you had bought two of these, or if you bought any piece of this as a holiday gift for a friend or a family member, that wasn't going to happen. But they had a solution and it was a printable card to get your friend or family member excited about the products that they would never receive. <laughs> horrible, horrible. I don't know what, what the world they were thinking because it was literally like a card that they made that had all of the items and you were supposed to check off the items that you were giving to your friend or your family member and you were supposed to give them this printed thing instead of their gift they were supposed to get in December. Like, it's coming, it's coming. <sighs> I do think though, at this point, Glamour Dolls really did think that things would eventually come together. When it would come together, I don't know, but I think that they did think that it was still gonna come together eventually. Now there is a clear split between the backers. People that are like, this is messed up. We're not getting our stuff. This is terrible. And then people who are like, trust the process. It's gonna be okay. Just trust the process. Glamour Dolls even shared a picture of the messed up packaging. And I, I swear, I watched this video like three, four times and I can't see anything messed up with it. Can you see what's messed up with it? I don't see anything. It looks fine to me. And the backers, their response to this video, they didn't see anything wrong either. But nevertheless, this product was not coming anytime soon. Not a lot happened in January of 2018. Mostly it was discussion over the highlighter and what shade they should do for the highlighter. Uh, there was an opal shade uh, that everybody had picked. And when they did the swatches of it, people realized that it wasn't going to be as universal as they thought it would be. People were complaining that it didn't look like anything like they thought opal would look like. Uh, so they decided they were also going to make a second shade rose gold so that it would work for most people and that in order to decide which one you would get you would fill out a survey they had a google form survey that you would fill out and if you chose one or the other that's the one that you would get if you didn't choose through that survey then glamour dolls would just throw one or the other in your box for you and that's it that's all that happened in january it is now February of 2018. It is one year after the Kickstarter began. Here is what's happening. February 8th, Peter posts a post into the Kickstarter community. He admits that he's been slow to communicate and he says that sometimes there just isn't anything new to update. Regardless, he says that he wants to communicate more frequently, which he does do. Regarding the delivery schedules, he says that there's just things that are stopping it from going along and they're just stuck. For example, they said that the original highlighter powder that they had worked out was not good, that it was leaking. So then they had to start over and get new packaging for it. And then he mentions about the hand painting of the damn unicorns, which, you know, hand painting 5,549 because I counted them. Unicorns is a lot. I don't know what kind of logic made you think that that was gonna be a good thing to do. But I guess the problem was is they had already sneaked this unicorn that was gonna be hand painted to the lower tier backers before they added the upper tier backers and they're just gonna leave it out of the higher tiers. They could have because that would have been realistic, but they didn't. They added it into all the tiers. And it's 5,549 backers because those $200 backers, remember, are getting two unicorns. And everybody at $20 or more was supposed to get one of these things. But according to Peter, 
there was good news because he said that even though it was going to cost Glamour Dolls more, he promised that as soon as an item was ready, that they were going to ship it out, even if it did cost them more money. Then they do something that they didn't have to do, which I think was really good of them. They did a voice call with their backers on February 14th, and that call does still exist, and I listened to the whole thing. And they really did open it up and allow anybody with questions that joined that call to ask those questions. In that call, they went through each individual product and it seemed like a lot of them were either waiting for Lisa Frank artwork or waiting for Lisa Frank approval and they couldn't contractually move forward with anything until Lisa did those pieces of her contract. Peter also says that once Lisa approves something, it's still gonna take 45 days in order for that product to go through the manufacturing process. And I'm sitting here thinking, what about all those times that you promised backers that you were on schedule, that things were coming? You knew it was going to take 45 days, a month and a half once Lisa approved it. You knew you didn't have Lisa's approval. And in some cases, you didn't even have the final mock-up of a product, but you're still telling people you're on track and you're on time. Why would you do that? Why would you just lie like that? And I personally believe it was so that backers wouldn't ask for refunds because they couldn't afford to give out all of those refunds and still have a chance of making this happen. So they just lied to keep it all going. In the call, they addressed some of the most common questions that were happening in the community. And one of them was about, why didn't you tell us that this was going to be in Ipsy? I'm gonna go ahead and play the clip of Peter talking now. Hi, how are you? Good, who am I speaking with? My name is Beth. Hey Beth. Okay, so I know you said that uh, the Ipsy deal was in production long before the Kickstarter ever was, but why was there no transparency with that with the Kickstarter itself? Um, I think that was a big point of contention for a lot of us was all of a sudden Ipsy people had stuff and we didn't and we had no idea. And then Hot Topic also has stuff that we will never have unless we go to Hot Topic. Um, yes. Okay. So let me try to answer this. Um, you're absolutely right that I... And I was not aware, um, I, I think that all of us in this process kind of lost track of what was updated and what wasn't. Um, we also have some things where like Ipsy, for example, when we sign a contract with them for a, for a glam bag, um, we're actually under confidentiality agreement that we're not allowed to say anything because part of their business model is having their, um, their Ipsters like get the reveals and all of that. So oftentimes we're on like an NDA clause where we're not allowed to tell people that like, we have an Ipsy, you know, order going into this glam bag because that is their competitive model. Um, so I'm sure that if we weren't able to tell you, um, it was just because something like that was happening. We got all four orders uh, in July of 2016, and they were spaced out for 2017. So we had like one delivery for April, one delivery I think for June, one delivery for like uh, August, and one delivery for October or November. And so. Um, a couple times, like I said, between Lisa and between Ipsy, um, a lot of times our, our hands are just tied in terms of what we can say, and we can't always find a creative way to, to let you guys know. Um, as far as Hot Topic goes, um, because those Ipsy orders came in, um, and because we do have, like I said, we have payroll and um, you know our rent and stuff to pay, we actually didn't make a profit off of this Kickstarter campaign. I know that's um, it's a hard thing for people to, um, to kind of believe with the the size of it, but um, we have to manufacture all those goods. Uh, we have licensing fees to pay to Lisa. Um, we had to pay for, you know, um, for production of the video and for all these different things. And so at the end of the day, it basically built this collection for us. So Hot Topic um, ordered some of the Ipsy products, but that's all they've gotten. They haven't received any of the Kickstarter um, actual products. And what we're gonna do so that they don't get them before you guys is ship yours first and then ship to Hot Topic. So, and beyond that, everybody else we've told just has to wait um, because we don't have firm delivery dates for them either. Um, did that answer? And also, can you, I mean, I'm, I'm open to also some, you know, some feedback and criticism, like is there a way that we could have, or is there a way now understanding those components that um, we can better share some of that info? Um, it's not really a thing that's going to happen again because there are no if, more Ipsy orders on this stuff. But, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's not always something that's in our control. 
Right. I think for me personally, if you had just come out and said, you know, some of the products that we have available you are going to see before the end of Kickstarter or something like that, be very transparent with what items they are, but right. still let us know that some of them will be out there before we're going to get ours, that would have alleviated a lot of it. Okay. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm learning. We're, this is our first, uh, you know, kind of business, so I'm having, I'm taking notes on all of this stuff, um, and that's how we're going to also try to be better with you guys. Um, so I really appreciate that, and I, I guess I didn't consider afterwards, um, you know, how big of a deal it was for everybody, and I do hope that by getting you guys these pallets, which we think are going to be like, you know, the hottest product of 2018, um, I think you guys are going to have them in your hands first. You'll be able to share them and try them out, and um, and also get them at a price that's, you know, um, you know, five dollars as opposed to like the eighteen dollars that uh, Hot Topic is going to be carrying them for. So, um, you know, we'll uh, we'll really work hard to get you guys um, everything that was developed in Kickstarter before anybody else can get it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for you know calling in and participating in all of this. Um, like I said, we're we're trying to hear you guys and and make changes on our end as well. Because, yeah, you didn't have to say it was with Ipsy, but you could have said, hey, there are a couple of products. You're going to see them come out somewhere. Just so you know, they were ordered before we started. We actually had these products paid for before the Kickstarter started. So these are ones that were already pre-ordered. These are not the products that you're paying for. They didn't have to say that it was Ipsy. They didn't have to say when they were coming out. But just to make a general statement, that should not have violated the non-disclosure. Just to say that somebody had purchased them. Peter makes it very clear that refunds are are available. He mentioned that Lisa has her own proprietary color and that every single lab has to be taught how to make this color because it is very specific copyrighted color by Lisa Frank. And then he was asked about the postcard and his answer is super weird. Um, what about the vintage postcards that are clearly not vintage? Um, this may be my fault. Um, I'm a little bit um, unsavvy when it comes to pop culture, so I'm not sure what the, the exact definition of vintage is. Um, as far as I knew, um, when I spoke to Lisa, she referred to them that way, but I don't know um, what era you guys were looking for. I think that they were old enough that they have a QR code on them, which I don't see too often on products anymore, so they must have been from the early 2000s, but I do not know the exact date of them. Um, again, we just, you know, asked Lisa to ship them, and so I think those were the ones she thought would be uh, really fun for you guys to have. Um, and so I thought she, she also thought it would be fun to do the signature um, portion, so I know she, uh, she went out of her way to make that happen. And you notice he doesn't mention anything about the signature not being hand signed. Nothing, nothing about that. Just straight up trying to gloss it over, like, dude, just, just, it's not vintage. It's not vintage. This is a very interesting part of the question and answer session that Peter outright lies again, because we have the information to prove that he lied. So when asked how big he thought that the Kickstarter would get, he says this. My question, I guess, was when you first launched this Kickstarter, like when you first started thinking about it, how big did you guess it would be? Because I know it wound up sort of blowing up a lot bigger. It went viral and BuzzFeed grabbed it and all these other news sources grabbed it. Yeah. So what, was, what was the size you guys were anticipating before that? I mean, we, you know, we set the goal at 30,000. Um, we... We figure that it might go, you know, a bit higher. It might hit 50,000 or, you know, maybe like on a crazy day, like 75,000 after it was all said and done. But like, like you said, we just, you know, we didn't anticipate how much of, um, and I'll tell you, not even just online, in person as well, too, what a, what a truly like nostalgic and um, emotional connection people have with Lisa Frank um, and her artwork. It's just incredible. Um, you know, like you pointed out, people picked it up online, BuzzFeed, all these people started sharing it. But we know for a fact that this is probably not true. At least this is not what he told the Kick Further people, because this is the post that he put in the Kick Further community. He said that he thought it was likely that they would hit $2 million 
on the Kickstarter, which would, quote, lead to an immediate general house cleaning and pay off whatever little debt we have, which is mostly here. He says that the $2 million he expected to get from the Kickstarter, he would use that money to pay back the Kick Further people. Then he would use the Kickstarter money in order to pay for the products. I will, though, give credit where credit is due in that they did not have to have this call. They didn't have to do all of these updates. They're not required to do that, but they were because I genuinely believe that Glamour Dolls thought this was going to happen. But it's just, it's, they're, they're not setting realistic goals. That's the big problem. In March of 2018, Glamour Dolls and the team, like this is enough. We are flying out to hang out with Lisa and find out what the hell is happening. So they fly the team out to quote, work out much of the remaining artwork. Then they start posting this matrix system where it talks about the where each product is in the production process. It looks like the most delay is happening on the Wenji palette, the highlighters, and the nail polish set. And that's the only update they give in March is that, hey, we're meeting with Lisa, we're working out the artwork, and then nothing. And the backers are absolutely losing it at this point. Like, almost everybody is turning on them because they're like, what the hell is happening? What is this matrix? Why is this stuff not done yet? Because almost a year ago, you told us this stuff was already done, and now you're telling me it's not done? A backer named Kristen said, I backed this while pregnant with my now 10 month old child and still nothing. So obviously they're reading this over at Glamour Dolls and they wanted to post something. So basically they posted at the end of March. Uh, yeah, we don't have anything else to tell you. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you is we, we don't have anything else to tell you. And then people lost it even more. It was so bad. People were so frustrated. And I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. The matrix that they posted at the end was basically the same thing, but in more friendly language. That's it. That was the only update. Oh, wait, there was one more thing. There was a final draft of the cosmetic bag. They did post that and it's so cute. It's so cute, my friends. Too bad nobody got it. Now it is April of 2018, the one year anniversary of the end of the Kickstarter campaign. And the only thing that's been shipped out are the eyeshadow and the bronzer to a select handful of people who were at the very top tier or people that added them onto their bags. They've also shipped out the blush brush or the crease brush to anybody that added them, but those top tier backers have not received them. But things get a little bit more hopeful because we finally get the final draft of the Bold and Bright palette, and it is freaking adorable. It is so cute. I mean, you can't tell me that's not cute. That is so cute. And of course, they give us a new matrix. And if you look at it, it's like everything's waiting for Lisa. Everything's waiting for Lisa. They keep dragging it out throughout April, dragging it out, giving us a little sneak peek of this pic this product here, a little sneak peek of that product here. We got a photo of two palettes. We got arm swatches of the shades. We got a video of the natural palette. The Matrix now says that Lisa has the samples and they're waiting for her feedback. By the end of April, we get to see the box that the lippy is in and it's so freaking cute and we're starting to get excited again. This is finally coming coming to an end, we're finally gonna get our products. In May of 2018, <laughs> Glamour Dolls, in the nicest way possible, is saying Lisa's being a pain in the ass. <laughs> They're trying really hard to be kind and professional, but mostly there's an issue with these matte mousse products. The full explanation is gonna be on the screen for you. You can pause to read it, but basically she didn't like the way that the color looked paired with the cap. So she wanted them to make four mock-ups of four different empty containers, and then she would decide which one matched with the lip color the best. And they said that's what's been holding up that particular product. We also got a picture of the lip balm tint finished. It is perfection. It is so adorable. The matrix for mid-May is still nothing approved by Lisa. Glamour Dolls is making progress on their end, but no updates on Lisa's end. At the end of May, we see the draft of the nail polish bottles, and oh my gosh, are these things freaking gorgeous or what? I can't even, I can't even. They said that the colors weren't, of course, the colors that were going to be in the, the bottles, but these were the draft bottles we have been waiting for since February of 2017, when we were told that they were a reward, they are finally here and they are gorgeous. They did not disappoint. But then, I'm sorry to say my friends, there was silence for four months. And silence for four months is a very, very bad sign. So 
September 21st of 2018. I'm going to read this to you in full because I feel like you need to feel the emotion in this one. Because you know that meme or that little video where it's like, and this is when she knew she f***ed up. That this is it. This is the moment where we all knew we were getting nothing. Here it goes. Hi, everyone. Thank you for your patience as we've gathered facts and information to provide you with a thorough update on this campaign. We apologize for the delay in delivery of the products and we understand that you might be disappointed. Please know that we're making significant efforts to deliver the products to you. Despite those efforts, we are encountering issues we never imagined when we enthusiastically began, began this campaign. This update is to share information with you regarding our efforts to fulfill our obligations and to account for the money that you so generously committed to this campaign. Below is how much we raised in this campaign. This itemized list that follows shows you how we have appropriately expended those funds toward completion of this product. Total Kickstarter funds raised, including backer kit, $475,685. Because remember, they opened backer kit after the Kickstarter ended, so people that missed out on the Kickstarter could fund the project through backer kit, get individual products, or get in on those bundles. Then he continues, cost expended toward completion, production sample costs, $15,329. Contractual payments to LFI, which is Lisa Frank Incorporated, $510,000. $754.04. Contractual artwork fees to Lisa Frank Incorporated, $45,615. Total spent, $571,698.04, which if you do the math is about $100,000 more than they raised in the Kickstarter and the Kick Further. Then he continues reiterating all the steps that it takes to make the product and you'll notice all of the fluffy language she was using to describe Lisa, that she was using her creative genius and that she's amazing. And she's all, it's all gone. It's now LFI. There's no mention of Lisa anymore. It is LFI and that's it. It's become very, very professional. No more Mr. Nice Glamour Dolls. The next chart is not a matrix of hope, but a matrix of death, unfortunately. The death of this project because we learn what we already knew in a different format. The products that have already been released, the two brushes, the bronzer and the eyeshadows in September of 2018 are still the only ones that are ready because everything else is waiting for Lisa. Either they are waiting for Lisa to create artwork or they are waiting for Lisa to approve the final sample. The post continues. We hope that the information above demonstrates that we have been working hard to deliver these products to you. As a company, Glamour Dolls is committed to producing the highest quality makeup products for you at an affordable, accessible, and inclusive price. And to that end, we are committed to making this right for you. Please know that we are continuing to work towards fulfilling our obligations to you and that Glamour Dolls will do everything it can to make sure the situation is resolved. We will continue to make additional updates as we have more information. We sincerely thank all of our backers for your collective patience. With gratitude, Peter and the Glamour Dolls team. And this is when the backers collectively lost their shit. A backer named Lauren summed it up very, very well. She said, Lisa Frank is still up and running in terms of selling product. If you go to their site, they still have things for sale. Glamour Dolls has a fully functioning website selling tons of makeup. They even promote on Instagram to this day, both of them. I am outraged. Everyone, they got almost half a million dollars from us. When are we going to come together and do something? $100 is not nothing to me. I am not rich. I am a single mom and this was something I treated myself to. This is so wrong. Where is our money? How do you have money to make and sell other products and not refund us or make our products we paid for over two years ago? Because she says two years ago because we don't get another update from Glamour Dolls until April of 2020. We are now three years after the end of the Kickstarter. This is the last update that the backers will ever receive. Well, at least up until February of 2024 that we've ever received. This is what it says. And keep in mind, this is right after the pandemic began. Hi backers, we hope that everyone and their loved ones are healthy and safe during this crazy time. It has been a long while since our last update, 
but that does not mean that we have forgotten about you or have stopped fighting to get you resolution on this project. We want to start by thanking all the amazing people who have supported us through this very difficult last two years, especially the trade partners, friends, and family who have lived this with us. Please understand that in July of 2018, the artist who we were collaborating with on this campaign threatened to take legal action against us if we continued to update you about the status of the products. To date, we have paid over $750,000 to the artist in artwork fees, royalty advances, and sales royalties, much of which was for the products you purchased and did not receive. It included all the money raised by this Kickstarter campaign, whatever money we had as a business and loans that we and our families personally took out to continue paying to, into this license. We were blessed that a few law firms who heard our situation reached out to help, and we are continuing to work with them and follow their guidance as we take the appropriate steps forward. Last year, we met with our state's attorney general's office where we shared the full collection of products. The included items that were produced, like brushes, as well as production-ready samples that were ready to manufacture in the spring of 2018. We also provided proof of all funds received and all the payments made to the artist. Over the past few years, we have learned that we are not the first people to have a negative experience working with this artist. And then they link a Jezebel article, which is full of all kinds of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and link Bailey Sarian's video about the Jezebel article down below if you want to hear all the sordid details of that or and also link the Jezebel article itself. Then they continue, nor are we the last. And this is an article from LA Weekly about another business deal Lisa Frank did in 2019 that went bad. And then the letter continues. While many of you are frustrated, there are a number of people in this campaign who have made it a mission to bully, defame, and harass us on social media. Some have gone as far as posting the home addresses of our team members or their families online. Moving forward, we will not tolerate this behavior and will take appropriate action if necessary. Thank you for being patient with us as we continue to work with our lawyers and trade partners. We are fighting to get you your money back and to get Glamour Dolls back on its feet as a business. Sincerely, Peter and the Glamour Dolls team. Before I start the conclusion of this video, I want to be very clear that I believe that Glamour Dolls played a huge role in the mis misleading and the lying that they did to backers. That's what this whole video has been about. They set out unrealistic expectations and never let anybody that funded the unrealistic expectations know that things were unrealistic until it came out to the public, until they were forced to tell the backers that they had been lying to them. They did everything they could to string backers along to make sure that they couldn't get refunds because a lot of us, once this hit, of course, wanted a refund. We knew we weren't getting our products. Nobody was getting anything else, but by now we couldn't go to our banks. Even by the time we hit that update in September of 2018, most banks will not allow you to get money back more than a year after your purchase. I don't know of any bank that will allow you to do that. So there was no way at this point we could get our money back. And I think that was the goal of Glamour Dolls was to hold on to all of our money because they could not afford to lose Lose it, even if it meant us never getting our products. I also believe that Glamour Dolls really did think that eventually this would all go through. They were in too deep financially to back out now. My goal of this entire video was to show you what it was like to be a backer, to show you the roller coaster that Glamour Dolls knowingly put us on, the way they manipulated us and lied to us. But what we did not know was this next piece that I want to end the video with, which is what Lisa was doing to Glamour Glamour Dolls according to Glamour Dolls and the court documents that I was able to track down. I was only able to access one court document from this. They have a bunch of other ones that are available to people that have access to that system. I do not have access to it, so I was not able to look at them. But the document I was able to look at, I found out a lot. The original contract was signed between the companies in June of 2016. That was supposed to last until December of 2017 where Glamour Dolls would sell cosmetic products branded with LFIs, artwork, and or trademark their licensed products until December 31st of 2017 when the contract ended. Lisa Frank was guaranteed, among other things, a minimum royalty payment. Glamour Dolls claimed that in June of 2017, Lisa started being slow to review samples and that led them to, 
start falling behind. Remember, the products they were making at this time were the two brushes, the eyeshadow, and the bronzer that were paid for by the Kick Further campaign. So around when the contract was supposed to end, they say it was somewhere around December 17th, Lisa threatened to cease production on all outstanding products, including discussions and review, feedback and approval on already submitted samples unless Glamour Dolls signed another licensing agreement. They called it the 2017 agreement and quote, tendered the first guaranteed minimum royalty payment for such in advance. Glamour Dolls says that, quote, under extreme duress, they signed a new contract that increased Lisa's minimum royalty payment from $100,000 to $500,000. And this required quarterly payments up front rather than a lump sum at the end. And this is where Glamour Dolls screwed themselves. And I think it was because they were so scared that Lisa was going to pull out of it because if Lisa pulled her copyright, they were had already promised all of these products to all of these backers and their contract didn't cover the production time of those products. The lawsuit says that around June 15th of 2018, this was after the last update in 2018 where they turned everything and changed everything to LFI instead of Lisa, Glamour Dolls paid the third $125,000 guaranteed minimum payment, which was originally due on June 24th of 2018. They said that Lisa refused to provide artwork, accept samples for review, or engage in any communication with Glamour Dolls until they paid her that $125,000. $5,000. This is why she wasn't approving anything because she said outright, I'm not going to do anything until you give me money. You need to give me my sum that was part of the contract that we signed and you're supposed to give me quarterly. And if you don't do it, I'm not doing any more work for you until I get my money. So they said they did pay her. They felt like they had to pay her or else everything was going to be for nothing. They weren't going to be able to release anything. They weren't going to be able to sell anything. They were absolutely screwed. So this is the kicker. After they paid Lisa the money, Glamour Dolls says that Lisa, quote, ordered the immediate halt of all product development and advised Glamour Dolls that an official response will be provided within the next few days. According to court documents, right after she got paid, Lisa terminated their contract. I don't know how she did it. I don't know how she terminated, but apparently she terminates the contract. The reason why she did this, my friend, is because there was another company that wanted to work with her and she couldn't work with them if she was still working with Glamour Dolls and she was set most likely to make more money from this other contract and that contract was with Morphe LLC. In November of 2020, Insider published an article about the collaboration between Lisa Frank and Morphe. That palette did launch and supposedly did very, very well. It's funny because I went over to the Insider article and I was like, oh, that's me. That's me complaining. <laughs> because me as a backer, I was like, I still haven't got my products from Glamour Dolls. Why is she collaborating with Morphe? So according to Glamour Dolls, in that article, they say that she made defamatory statements statements against Glamour Dolls, which caused, quote, grave damage to Glamour Dolls' business reputation and loss of goodwill associated with Glamour Dolls products. That article is going to be linked down below. I will put a screenshot of the defamatory statements on the screen for you to read. You can decide whether they're defamatory or not. The courts have yet to decide. Because in May of 2021, Glamour Dolls filed an official lawsuit against LFI. In December of 2021, Glamour Dolls filed its first amended complaint. That's the one that I was able to see. This was against Lisa Frank asserting nine different claims. The claims are one, breach of contract, two, breach of duty of good faith and fair dealing, three, fraud, four, unjust enrichment, five, business defamation, six, false advertising in violation of the Federal Lanham Act, seven, trade libel, product disparagement, injurious falsehood, eight, tortious interference with business expectations, and nine, liability for the torts, breaches and debts of defendant LFI, piercing the corporate veil. I don't know what half that stuff means. I'm going to be 100% with you. I don't know what that means. But what I do know is what the courts decided on those things as of now. For count number one, breach of contract, it was partially dismissed. For counts two through nine, the dismissal was denied, meaning that the courts feel that Glamour Dolls has a case to push forward to present their evidence for the rest of the counts. That includes the fraud, that includes the business defamation, that includes the unjust enrichment, and all the things that I don't even know what it means. What's important to know here 
is the, the most recent court filing on this was January 26th of 2024. In real time, that was just a couple of weeks ago. The one before that was on December 19th of 2023. And again, I can't access those documents. Hello, editing Jen here. So I'm editing and I'm searching for something random on my computer and I found this. This is a screenshot that I captured from the Morphe bankruptcy case. And in the bankruptcy filings, uh, look what I found. It is Lisa Frank, who says that she is still owed $55,000 that she never got from Morphe and is probably losing in their bankruptcy. So take that for what you will, but I could not end the video without adding that in back to the video. I do have a feeling that one day there will be a part two to this video because there is more of the story that's going to unfold. And maybe, just maybe one day, I will have my very own Trapper Keeper eyeshadow palette. I'm not gonna hold my breath, but based on the court documents, it is still possible. In conclusion, this is possibly the biggest hot mess, I would argue, in the history of makeup launches, especially in the history of collaborations. This is so much worse than I ever could have possibly imagined, from all of the lies to the fake vintage postcard to the fake signatures to the everything is ready, but it's not, to the leading people on with the samples and the choices and the rewards that weren't actually rewards to the things being sold it's a retailers before they were even shipped to the backers, the lack of communication and the too much communication, the Lisa Frank screwing over Glamour dolls so incredibly royally that they really didn't have a lot of choice but to screw over their backers in hindsight, of course. But there were so many things that Glamour Dolls could have done to avoid a lot of this. And the first thing they could have done was to not add so many products, especially adding so many products that they knew they couldn't deliver on. I do believe with my entire soul that Glamour Dolls saw those dollar signs. The dollar signs were in their eyes. They saw how much money they made off of the Ipsy deal and they wanted to multiply that and multiply that and multiply that. And to be honest, that's what businesses do. They are in the business of making money, but this was just pure bad business. It was bad choosing a business partner. It was a lot of bad luck. It was a lot of just bad, all compounding into $350,000 of people's money being given essentially to Lisa Frank and her going and collaborating with Morphe and making more money and the backers never getting our money back. So that is the full story of everything that happened with the Glamour Dolls Lisa Frank Kickstarter. If you are still here with me, hi, thank you so much for being here. If you are still here, leave me a unicorn or a rainbow emoji to tell me you made it. Thank you so much for watching this very long video. I hope that you found this ride interesting. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And at this point, my friend, it is your turn. In the collective reign of Make of Awesomeness, where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it and help us to see red flags in Kickstarter campaigns so we know when to pull our money out. I would love to know your thoughts about anything I presented to you in this video. Were you a backer? Did you watch what happened in real time? Are you new to all of this information? Do you think we will ever get our products? Do you think there's a chance? I would like to hold on to hope because my money is way gone. So maybe what, I don't know, I would like, I don't think so. I don't think it's gonna happen, but you know, maybe a 0.05% chance. We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you again so, so much for watching. If you're not done, if you feel like this video wasn't long enough for you and you want to hang out longer, oh my gosh, I would love for you to hang out longer. YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you over here, including a pass behind the controversy. I'm going to pop it right there. YouTube's going to pick the top one based on your viewing history. But if you do got to head out of here, I'll get it. This was a long ass video. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And that love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon.